Hello, everyone. Well, we know that talking about sexuality, sexual health can be a little bit uh, elusive or embarrassing if we really don't talk about it openly as, as a society. And, and here I am with Susanna. She has done an amazing work educating everyone over the last so many years through her journalism, writing over 8,000 articles, and being a sexologist, being a sexual health coach, and educating people how important it is to be okay to have a good sexual health. So here we are, Susanna, thank you so much for joining me. And um, we're gonna talk about mid-age women because that's what Nourish Talk focus is. So I'm gonna let it to you and start with that. Great, so um, middle-aged women, um, some people think that once you reach a certain age, your sex life becomes less important, but people, it's important for your physical and mental health um, your whole life long to have the kind of sex life that you want, whatever that is. And so um, people, as they go through menopause, sometimes experience drops in estrogen. They might experience things like vaginal dryness. Um, this is an opportunity to redefine sex for yourself, um, to bring in things like lube and sex toys and explore activities besides penetration, things that are um, outside of just intercourse, but may involve the whole body. And um, yeah, your, your sexual health, that's part of your relationship with your body. It's part of your confidence. And it is something that's important to talk about with whoever you can, especially if you're experiencing problems in that area, but also if you just, um, you know, anybody should be talking about sex with their partner if they just want to keep their sex lives exciting, especially in a long-term relationship. Okay, so so talk to us, uh, you know, you take a lot of scientific approach uh, in your career as a sexologist. So as from a scientific point of view, talk to us a little bit about, you talked about sexual health is important. So from a scientific point of view, why is it important, right? Why do women need to have, like at what point, should they stop having sex? And okay, that's my question. You know, if an, would you tell an 80 year old woman also if she has a partner uh, uh, or would you say, okay, 65, 70, 70, that's enough. I'm done with it. So from a scientific point of view, talk to us uh, a little mm -hmm. bit as the importance of, is there an age that need to stop or they continue? What do you think? From a scientific point of view, women who have sex later in life are actually less prone to high blood pressure and certain other health issues. Um, so I think that it's important throughout your life. You know, if you lose interest in sex, you don't have to force yourself, but a lot of people actually continue to have an interest in sex. Um, and again, your body may not work the same way as before, but there are a lot of benefits for your health as well as your relationship. Um, studies show that women who masturbate regularly have more body confidence. Women who, um, people sometimes use masturbation or sex as a pain reliever, um, particularly for menstrual pain, but um, it's just a way to keep yourself feeling alive and energized and to, it gives you a boost in mood, helps to reduce stress. So I would say that it's great to maintain a sex life throughout your entire life, uh, even if it's just by yourself. Okay, so now let's just talk a little bit, like we know that if we do exercise, right? I think that it's been written so, so many places all over the internet. There are certain type of hormones, what we call them, happy hormones are released, right? So talk to us mm -hmm. from a hormone point of view, are the same hormones also released when, um, you know, women, we are talking about women here, are engaging in pleasuring themselves either through a partner or uh, reaching an orgasm through other tools that you talked about. What happens, what kind of hormones and what happens in the mind and body? So talk to us a little bit about that as well, please. Yeah, orgasm actually releases natural opioids, which are pain relievers. So that's why some people find some people with chronic pain conditions or just menstrual pain uh, finds that sex or masturbation helps to relieve pain. Sex, um, particularly orgasm, but also sex in general, releases oxytocin, 
which is a hormone that helps you bond with people and makes you feel lovey-dovey. So it is a benefit for people who are having partnered sex. Okay. So now some of them, you know, uh, you talked a little bit about other tools, like some of uh, the women, you know, there's a lot of data that a lot of women go through divorce during that period of time. And, and they might not feel emotionally secure to have a partner, right? Of, to engage in um, uh, uh, sexual activities. What other tools can they, what, what else can they do? So uh, you talked about masturbation, you talked about some of the other tools or some kind of vaginal creams. Uh, just talk to us a little bit, more, elaborate a little bit more on, on this vaginal creams. Should they go for it or should they take any medication or supplements or some diet? Should they change their diet and nutrition? If you're going through menopause, you might experience vaginal dryness, um, in which case you might um, do hormone replacement therapy, or you might, you know, you should talk to your doctor about that, but you can also buy lube um, at pretty much any drugstore, and that will help make penetration more comfortable. Um, and yeah, I masturbation is a great way to maintain a sex life when you don't have a partner as well as to get you to know your body so you can communicate your wants and needs to a partner. And um, in terms of tools, I would say suction vibrators are a lot of people's favorites. Um, those sort of suck on the clitoris and they're very powerful. People say a lot of people who have trouble having an orgasm like can have one with those. Um, or just standard wand vibrators like the Hitachi Magic Wand are also popular. Um, I would recommend getting something made of body safe silicone or another body safe material just because there's toxic chemicals in some sex toys. Um, you can visit a sex toy shop like Good Vibrations or The Pleasure Chest or um, Babeland and they have people there who can sort of counsel you and help you figure out the best toy for you. All right. Um, I think I think this is what we wanted to bring today. Um, please tell us about your work, the kind of work that you're doing. You have some courses, so elaborate, uh, uh, educate everyone the kind of courses that you offer and the kind of work that you're doing now. I offer a lot of different courses. You can go on my website, SusannaWeiss.com. Uh, one of them is free. It's called The Orgasm Cure. It's entirely over email. It's just a series of emails you get with orgasm tips and different activities you can try at home. I also teach um, orgasms for vulva owners, which is more of a traditional, I will speak and teach you about how to have an orgasm. And you can also buy that on my website. Um, there's also a class for men, which is about um, pleasing and empowering women in the bedroom. And I have longer five month versions of each of those classes. Um, I'm currently starting to get a group together for those. So please contact me if that interests you. Well, yeah, no, absolutely. I think this is some topic. Uh, and if you don't mind, we love to share the free tips that you're doing with our community as well that you said, um, you know, women can benefit from the free tips that you are uh, offering you know if we send an email i would like to love to share that information with our community as well definitely thank you well thank you so much Susanna. any any last comments from you i think this is a very insightful um topic that we wanted to bring today it's a little bit people don't want to talk about it, but we want to talk everything openly here at nourish talks so any last comments from you before i wrap up today don't be ashamed of your desires, whatever they are. Don't be ashamed of wanting sex, of not wanting sex, or of wanting a particular kind of sex, having a particular fantasy. It's probably more common than you think. Yeah, and that's what I wanted to say, that we as society feel ashamed uh, of uh, talking about it. And if someone's having a problem, you know, generally, you don't go and call your girlfriend and say, hey, by the way, I'm having sexual issues right so we are as a society it doesn't matter which part of the world you are you know we we just feel uh kind of hesitant and that's the hesitation person like you who has been working on uh, non-stop to take that hesitation out and that's what i really love the work that you're doing and and 
validating it scientifically why sexual health is also as important as our other health, right? So do you want to comment on that last, last line before I wrap up today? Yeah, sexual health is part of your health and it's not just about STIs and pregnancy, it's about your well-being, your feelings about your sexual experiences, your sense of safety and trust with a partner. So you should value all those things. All right, well, thank you so much, Susanna, for being with us. Uh, really appreciate it. To all our viewers, keep tuning in. We bring all these different difficult topics for everyone to learn about and uh, start uh, doing it for yourself. With that, thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.